Now we're going to look at types and type conversions. So I'm going to go into the shell and starting with a tuple. So here we have a tuple familiar by its curly braces, which differentiates it from a list that uses brackets. So we have a tuple there that's very simple. And with tuples, we can put them into variables and actually use mixed items inside of a tuple just like we can do in a list. So I can create a list and basically it will have the same items. And that looks very much the same and it's kind of what is the difference between these two? Well, there's a lot of differences and to kind of demonstrate we can perform different functions on these. So for example, on a list, we know we can do uh, look for the head. So I have my list here and I get back one. So what happens if I try to do that on a tuple if they're so similar? So I have a tuple and that doesn't work. So we get this exception in place of a result. And that's just kind of the start of it. So there are a lot of differences, although they look similar. Now, what if we have something like one plus one or one plus two, and that works fine. And then we have one plus one. So in this case, we have an integer and a string. We know in Erlang, we don't have really any types. We don't have primitives that are defined as certain things, but Erlang still has the ability to determine what's going on with different variables so that when you try to add an integer and an integer that is actually a string, it's not going to do anything in that case. So the one, the second one in this example remains a string. And if I try to do something, as you can see, we get this error. So there is some ability in Erlang to tell what is going on with different types. So it can tell if it has a list, if it has a tuple, if it has an integer, if it has a string. Now there are different things we can do in the way of conversions. There's actually quite a few of them. So if I call into the module string, I have a function called to integer. And what I want to do here is pass in two, three and return. So in this case, what I'm getting back is a tuple. So I'm getting two, three, which is an item inside of this list. And then I've got basically an empty list as the second item. And this is a tuple, so I can't get ahead on this. I can't, you know, tell it to go get me the head of the tuple because it's just, I mean, the head of the list because I'm dealing with the tuple in this case. So then what if I want to do something different? So I'm going to call the module Erlang and do a list to integer with the same two, three. Now I actually get an integer. And there are several others. So if I go back into the Erlang module, I have an integer to list. So in this case, I have two, three, not a string. And remember in, in Erlang, the strings can be represented as integers because they're actually lists. Strings are actually lists. And so here I'm just dealing with the regular integer two, three, and I want to make it a list. So here we go. And now that's a list. So then if I go back, into the Erlang module and I do something like list to integer and I do 23.11 and I try to convert that into an integer. Well, that's not going to work. The argument is not compatible with list to integer. So I get this kind of exception here, bad argument, and it doesn't know what to do with the argument I've passed in. So if I go back into the Erlang module, I can actually handle this. So I can do this kind of conversion with it. I have a float, so I'm going to call list to float. Actually, when I wanted here, a list, not an integer. So I'm, I'm doing list to float. So I kind of let the punchline go ahead of time. So up here, we're dealing with an integer, not a list. And then right here, we want to do list to integer, but I actually have um, a float right there. What I wanted was list to integer in this case like that. So it wants us to start off with the list, which we are doing now and we were not doing earlier. So now if I run this, we still get the error, but now we have a parameter that's a little bit closer. So it is a list, but it's not the parameter that this is wanting to 
convert into just a regular integer. So when we use list to float, and we have that in quotes, that works. So then what if we have something like list to integer, and then we have 23. So we have that value. So in this case, this two, three inside of these brackets are not actually the list that we're needing to do the conversion. So again, this is Erlang's being very specific about the type that it wants, which although we have a lot of dynamic typing going on in Erlang, we can clearly see that it's able to differentiate about the different values we're sending in and what kind of type that is. So we keep going with conversions. We also have atom to list. And then let's say we have something, which is now an atom. We can do the conversion. There we have a list on the output. And if I use B list, because I've already used A list, I do Erlang, call back to atom to list, and do something again. So now I have that stored in B list. So what happens when we call that? So we call B list, and we want to try and get the head of this. We get 115. So a difference with what's going on here versus the output that we get there. So then what if we do this again? And this time we have, actually we want something like this. And so the head is just the one item because there's only the one item in there. Or if we don't have the quotes, then we're dealing with an atom in this case and we kind of get the same result. So that's a, a look at how Erlang is handling different kinds of types. And though under the, for us, it all kind of, we just type it in. We don't worry about saying if it's an integer, if it's a string, if it's a list, a tuple, or an atom. Under the covers, Erlang is definitely able to understand what those types are. So then we've seen how we can use different conversions. And again, Erlang's being very specific about the type that it wants to go in as a parameter when we are doing those conversions.